Hello everyone and Happy New Year everyone. I didn't show any videos yesterday or the day before that. Well, the day before that I was uh, taking a day off, but I was really looking for uh, the best possible game to show you, you know, just to start the year in, in a proper way. You know, we can't just start a year with a game where, uh, you know, nothing happens and then uh, one player wins a game because he's up a pawn. That, that's no way to start a year. So this is a game uh, from a tournament, the, uh, the Lorca uh, Open Tournament that took place in Spain. Uh, from 26th to 30th of December, uh, which uh, coincided with uh, the World Rabbit and Blitz Championship, and we kind of didn't, well, we didn't cover it, it kind of went under, under our radar, but not really. Uh, David Lada posted it on Twitter, and he tagged me in, in his post, so uh, he made sure I don't miss it, so thank you for that, David, and a lot of you have uh, afterwards uh, also sent this suggestion. So it's, uh, it's a game between uh, two grandmasters, uh, Spanish grandmaster Mark Narciso Dublan and uh, Ukrainian grandmaster Vitaly Bern uh, uh, Bernatsky. And uh, it's just a brutal game. I mean, you, you will enjoy it, I, I will tell you that. And it kind of reminds you of Gurganitsa versus Stahl in a way that uh, one player was able to take advantages of, uh, of the position since it doesn't appear like uh, the opponent has any weaknesses, but he actually does. But it also kind of reminds you of uh, Rotlevi versus Rubinstein, Rubinstein's immortal game, uh, in a way that, uh, uh, well, uh, the bishop pair was uh, utilized to, you know, uh, uh, how, how would I even say it? The, the bishop pair was just fully operational. Uh, but yeah, uh, that being said, let's just check it out since uh, that, that's what, what we're here for. Uh, and I do have a small announcement, but I'm going to save that for the end of the video. So that being said, uh, white opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, uh, c4, g6, and now f3, uh, avoiding the Grunfeld. Uh, so uh, asking black, what do you want to do here? Uh, you could still go for d5, but after captures and captures, you are not attacking the knight on c3. So after e4, you're just going to have to go back with the knight. And the Grunfeld players don't really uh, enjoy this setup. Uh, so bishop to g7, and now e4. We have a nice King's Indian with f3. Uh, we have castles by black and now knight to c3. If you're a King's Indian player and you, you're just starting out, you maybe enjoy the King's Indian setup, never be afraid of the e5 move. e5 doesn't really do all that much for white. You can go back to e8 and this is a good square for the knight since you can easily undermine uh, white's uh, center uh, later on. Uh, there's even a game we covered, uh, well, it was some time ago by Bobby Fischer. His opponent played e5, and la later after the game, Bobby Fischer just said in an interview that uh, his thoughts on, on the e5 move were uh, that it's j weak. He, j he just said weak. So that's, uh, that's what you should think about e5. But okay, knight to c3, uh, we have c6, preparing to, to further expand in the center with d6, maybe d5 la later on. Bishop to e3, uh, and d6 now. We have... Uh, uh, knight g to e2, all this has all been played before, we have a6, and now, uh, since uh, white doesn't want to meet b5, he pushes c5, and now, if black decides to trade, for example, captures, captures, and trade queens, which is usually something black wouldn't mind doing here, white occupies the d-file, and also uh, the c-pawn completely uh, stifles black's development on the queen side, you can't really uh, do much here. So just knight bd7, uh, Bernatsky continues development, we have c captures on d6, e captures on d6, and now while uh, some moves have been played in this position like knight f4, queen to d2 preparing to trade off the dark square bishop, knight to c1 was played uh, with ideas of remaneuvering the knight to, to other squares, knight to g3 is a new move in the position and it is as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So b5, now there is no c5 to, to prevent su such an expansion, and since f3 was played, uh, the center is nicely protected, white doesn't have to worry about b4. So just bishop to e2, white continues development, and c5 now, uh, which uh, uh, is always a, a useful move. You're preparing bishop to b7 uh, to open up this diagonal, and uh, well, you're just attacking white's strong center. We have castles, uh, and here comes c captures on d4. This seems a bit a bit of an unprincipled move since you're breaking the tension in the center without uh, seemingly gaining anything, uh, but uh, uh, after the exchange captures captures, you do get the, the c5 and e5 squares for your knight, so that, uh, that could be uh, a compensation. However, you are left with the weak isolated d6 pawn, but you know, you're playing black, you have to uh, concede somewhere. So bishop to b7, black continues development, we have rook to e1, and now rook to c8. Uh, continuing development, uh, white does the same, bishop to f1, now the rook nicely controls the e-file, rook to e8, and now rook to c1. Uh, 
all, all four rooks are now fully developed. And here, knight to e5. Your uh, e5 square is now free to be used as an outpost for the knight. And if uh, black wants to kick it away, he will either have to uh, change the the, the uh, structure of the game by by playing something like f4, which you don't really do as this really strengthens uh, black's light square bishop, or you give up the dark square bishop, which you, you simply don't do here. Uh, so queen to b3, connecting rooks, developing the queen. Also, a a4 might be an idea to, to undermine those pawns, uh, as the b7 pawn, uh, the b7 bishop is uh, undefended for the moment. But black just continues playing on the king side with h5. Now h4 is coming, you're going to kick away this knight. And uh, instead of continuing with something like rook cd1, uh, which, uh, you know, the game just continues, uh, white uh, played uh, knight to h1. He said, uh, okay, I don't want to meet h4 uh, coming with an attack on the knight, so I'm going to remaneuver the knight either way, maybe, maybe with ideas of knight f to maybe to d3 to trade off the strong knight in the center. However, knight to h1 actually loses the game for white. So feel free to pause the video and try to find why this is the game of the year uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting uh, two very important things. Uh, first, that the king doesn't really have all that many squares. The bishop and knight really make it awkward for the king, uh, you know, to enjoy his chambers. And here, the bishop on d4 is unguarded. Same as Gerganitz's rook was unguarded uh, when Tal started his attack here, the bishop is also unguarded. And it seems like it's very hard to, to go after this bishop, but not really, uh, as Bernatsky will show. So he plays knight captures on f3. For those of you who just want to enjoy the show if any of you found this then really congratulations it's uh it's the start of one of the greatest attacks uh well in 2019 definitely but also ever uh we have g captures on f3 if you don't capture it we're not even going to analyze that because well black can just win material it's not even it's not even uh tense uh if you don't capture it so g captures on f3 and now you continue with knight captures on e4 and here all hell breaks loose uh, so there are so many possible options. Do you capture on g7? Do you allow bishop captures on d4 with check? Do you capture the knight uh, with the pawn? Do you move the bishop? Do you capture the knight with the knight? So uh, we're just going to cover uh, the, the, well, the very important option. So obviously, well, first thing that comes to mind is I'm not going to allow bishop to d4 check. That's first thing we're going to check. So let's see what happens there. If bishop captures on g7, then you get b uh, queen g5 check. And now you see that the bishop and knight really make it awkward for the king, like we mentioned, and the knight covers the f2 square. So the king doesn't really have all that many squares. Problem is, if you block knight g3, then just knight captures on g3, h captures, and now queen captures on g3 with check. Uh, if you go here, then bishop captures on f3, just ends the game, uh, or, so you can block bishop g2. But now the queen attacks the rook. So rook captures with check, rook captures, you get queen captures with check, king moves, uh, and now... Uh, you can just recapture the bishop here. You are up the exchange. Uh, White's defenses are completely shattered. You are completely winning here. So that's only one of the things that can happen after a bishop captures on g7. However, after queen g5 check, White doesn't have to block with the knight. White can also block with the bishop. Then we make use of this diagonal. Really, really awesome stuff. Queen c5 check. Now you have to block. Otherwise, if king f1, queen to f2 is mate. Uh, the knight covers the f2 square, so knight to f2 has to be played, you have to clear the h1 square for your king, it doesn't really matter. Queen captures here, king h1, and now again the queen attacks the rook on e1, just knight g3 check. This is just uh, beautiful. H captures, rook captures with check, and we get pretty much the same stuff. Captures, captures with check, king h2, and now you either recapture right away or, or continue playing in great style with h4. It's just a very, a very impressive. G captures, queen captures with check, king goes back. You can give another check, pick up the bishop now. And again, uh, the, and now you also opened up the h file for your rook. It's completely over. So, uh, although it seems like you don't want to allow bishop captures on d4, you really have to, since we've just shown that bishop captures here due to this uh, nasty queen g5 check simply doesn't work. So, another option is, uh, well, this is the strongest defense, but calculating this in an actual over-the-board game, uh, very unlikely. Although it's hard to say that it's the best defense because it loses also by force. Bishop to e3 is, uh, is seemingly the best defense uh, since you don't allow bishop captures, but uh, you also don't capture on g7. Point being, knight g5 by black, by black now uh, piling up on the f3 
uh, pawn. This will come with check. The bishop also attacks it. You will have to remove it. Bishop captures queen captures with check. Now you block knight g3. But now you have rook captures on e1, rook captures on e1, and now just bishop captures uh, on f3. And uh, well, here you will just uh, uh, there's there's not much you can do here. Yes, you are uh, you are up a piece, but uh, it it will not do you any good. Uh, I mean, you you can easily win it back whenever you want to. Uh, queen to c5 check is coming, uh, and well, also once this bishop comes to d4 with check, it's game over with the light square bishop slicing uh, uh, through this diagonal. Uh, it's just. Uh, well, the, like I said, the bishop pair from hell is fully operational in every line we check. So after knight captures on e4, let's check knight captures on e4. This doesn't work well. Now you capture the bishop with check first, of course. Knight h2 f2, you clear the h1 square for your king. Rook captures on c1, rook captures on c1, and now bishop captures on e4. Uh, the knight here is pinned, so f captures on e4, and again you get queen g5 check in, and now this check connects with the rook on c1. So in every line you check, the one of the rooks is getting picked off by the queen, uh, which is just awesome. And uh, it doesn't really matter what you play, you can even block with the queen, a queen captures here, you're up the exchange, of course, and, and uh, in a completely winning position. So, uh, lastly, uh, now Dublin decided to capture with the pawn. He played f captures on e4, but now uh, the, a similar variation appears. Bishop captures on d4 with check, knight f2 blocks, and now not queen g5, but rather queen to h4, threatening queen captures here. And also, you keep the g5 square uh, free for the rook. If needed, you can do a nice rook lift with rook to c5 followed by rook to g5 check. We have rook to c2, uh, defending the, the knight here, and now, uh, while well, rook to c5 is a perfectly viable plan, followed by rook to g5, uh, uh, Bernatsky goes for the, for the most forcing variation. Uh, removing the defender of the pawn on e4, rook captures on c3. We have b captures on c3, and now, uh, of course, uh, queen to g5 check. This comes first, you have to prepare, you have to kick away the, the, the king either to, to the light square diagonal to face the light square bishop, or, in the case of this game, queen to g, like I said, if king to h1, then it's just rook captures on e4, you open up this diagonal, and that's just over. Whatever you play doesn't really matter. Captures, captures with check, you're gonna go knight captures on e4, or you block with the bishop, uh, then it's just queen g2 mate, or you capture here, and then you free the g1 square for the queen. Queen, g, queen g1 is mate here. So, after queen to g5, we have bishop to g2 blocking, but now the same idea applies. Rook captures on e4, opening up this diagonal. Now, if the rook moves with check, queen captures here will be mate, so you have to react to this. Uh, we do have to check rook captures on e4 first, but it's the same. Bishop captures, now mate is threatened, you cannot capture due to the pin. You can start running away king f1, but it also ends in, in, a, in a forced mate. Queen captures on g2 check, king e1, queen g1 check, you're gonna move king d2. Uh, bishop or queen captures doesn't really matter because the king is unable to escape anywhere. Uh, this is just a very slow death. Uh, rook c1, you clear something for the king, but not really. Bishop e3 check, and here you just get made it. Check, check, here, and bishop to f3. Again, mate uh, delivered by, uh, well, your, your favorite bishop pair from hell. So, after rook captures on e4, uh, trying uh, to capture or any other move doesn't really do. Uh, so, king to f1 was played, but now uh, we, you know, it, it's not, a, I mean, every great game, Morphe's Opera House game is a brilliant game, but it wouldn't be a brilliant game without the finish to that game. So, once again, feel free to pause the video and try to find the best move in this position while I give you a few seconds. So uh, I'm sure a lot of you uh, were able to do it since I mentioned Morphe's Opera House game, but in case you didn't and you just wanted to enjoy the show, uh, it's Queen Captures on G2 with check. So congratulations everyone who found it. Uh, white is without a move here. White has to go under the di diagonal of the light square bishop and here it's just over. King Captures was played, Rook Captures on, a, uh, on E1 with check, opening up a discovery from the light square bishop. And here, if you start running away, uh, let's say King, G, King G3, it, it's a force mate. Bishop E5 check, King H4, Bishop F6 check, forcing the king back. Rook to E3 check, you're gonna go King to F4, uh, and now uh, just Rook to F3 will be a delivered mate. Uh, all, of the, uh, all of the squares are covered here, as you can see, by the bishops, the pawns, and the rook covers these, uh, these two files. So, after rook captures on e1, knight to e4, uh, 
giving the king some, some more squares, but it doesn't help. Just bishop captures an e4 with check, king g3, and rook to g1 check. And it was in this position on move 28. Remember, this is only move 28. It seems like it's a longer game because we've covered so many lines, but it's really not. Uh, it's move 28, and here, uh, Mark Narciso Dublin resigned, uh, which uh, kind of, you know, it, it's a, you know, a sour bite to end the meal, so to say. If your opponent beats you, it's always hard to accept defeat, but if your opponent beats you like this, then you allow to see the mate on the board. Uh, if the game continued, we would see king h4, now comes bishop to f6 check, uh, king h3, and bishop to f5 is now mate uh, delivered again by your favorite bishop pair from hell. And it doesn't help if you go to h3 instead of an h4, it's just a different move order, bishop f5 check, king h4, and now bishop to f6 check. Again, uh, the bishop pair from hell uh, is, well, uh, gets the job done. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game I decided to start the year with. I do hope you guys approve. I mean, uh, I, it's hard to say if it's the best game of 2019, but I do, I do, I do believe it is. Uh, if you enjoy games like uh, these, I will also put two games in the description below so you can check them out. Also played in, in 2019. Uh, one by one by the Indian Tal and the other one by by Murli Kartakin, and it, those are two really awesome games. So you can maybe compare this game to those two games. Really awesome stuff, if you have the time. So yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you approve of my choice, uh, which game starts our year on this channel. Uh, I also, uh, I wanted to mention, I said I do have an announcement. I will make a live stream. I will try to do it maybe maybe on Friday or, or on Saturday. Uh, we will play some chess, but mostly about, uh, I'm starting a podcast and I will give you some updates about the chess manga uh, I've been mentioning from, from time to time. And uh, well, it, it can just also be a, a you know, just a stream where you can ask me stuff about that and I will uh, answer them, you know, uh, while we enjoy some chess. That, that's what I wanted to say. I will inform you when it will take place. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank uh, Filip Bilodao, uh, Debra Mordecai, Ron Traus, uh, Slobodan Vrkačević, and Timothy Rozon for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing, uh, well, to check up on your wonderful suggestions, preparing the next big saga, which is the Paul Morphy saga, and, uh, well, that's pretty much it. And the, the Tata still is starting uh, fairly soon. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day, and hope uh, you achieve everything you, you set for yourselves uh, in, the, in the upcoming year. See you soon.